Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Nick Alex, and today we're going to be reviewing Morgan Le Fay's new premium uniform, Fallen Soul. Now, with these uniforms, we go a little bit more in-depth on the nitty-gritty because they are paid uniforms. That's right, there is no way to get this uniform for free unless you have a way of getting gift cards somehow or crazy amounts of Google surveys, that sort of thing. You get 10 tokens for free as part of the seven day login, which you can see in game, I believe. And then the other 20 tokens have to be made up through actual in-app purchases. However, here's what you're going to get from her uniform. So she gets five brand new skills, uh, including new animations. They are all sort of witch, Halloween, spooky themed, a little bit of hocus pocus. It looks very nice visually. We'll get into the value and the function just a little bit later. So with her first skill, she stomps, she summons a bunch of bones, and then they spear the target. Really cool skill. And yes, you can cancel it once you get the bones up, uh, because then you can, you know, they'll just, they'll, they'll meet their target anyways. Speaking of canceling, her second skill, also very cool, reminds me of Dr. Voodoo. She flies up, summons a bunch of skeleton heads, and then the skeleton heads seek out their target. Like her first skill, as soon as she flies up, you can cancel that. So you do start to see a pattern of being able to quickly combo a lot of her moves. Her third skill, very cool. She flies up, slams down, and then it's a combination of a massive, massive skeletal hand grabbing you. Unfortunately, there's no snare and more skeleton, more, uh, more skulls. Her fourth skill, she draws something, she draws like a pentagram down on the ground, which looks really cool. And then it rains down meteors on you. Very, very, very cool. Also, you can cancel it as soon as she gets up there. Again, very nice ability to combo. And then her fifth skill, she does this sort of crazy summoning and this massive skull bone dagger slams down. Yeah. Very, very, very cool. And I believe once the dagger's up, you can cancel it. So again, there's lots of room to cancel. Oh yeah, and then her tier three, my bad. Her tier three. She summons a bunch of orbs into a huge one and then pops it and it explodes and does a bunch of damage. Pretty fast animation, pretty cool animation. So a lot of room to cancel, a lot of room to combo with this uniform. I'm not gonna give you a rotation in the skill preview because I wanna show you in a fight, okay? And I think she can be used for PVE, but of course, a lot of people are gonna be looking at her for a PVP or a support role because of her uh, tier two passive, not her tier two passive, her uh, uniform passive, excuse me. Her uniform passive gives all universals 35% attack, 35% incre increased damage to boss types, and then debuff. So very, very powerful effect. However, I will point out her stats are incredibly low incredibly low so with a full build here no odin's blessings but full build full mythic uniform okay rolled hp energy attack all that good stuff stage 12 power of angry hulk okay with all that going on she's just barely at fifty-three thousand energy attack very low defenses we're talking like tier two levels of defenses super low i mean she's not wearing much so i guess her defenses kind of make sense but still uh, and then just 69,000 HP. To put that into perspective, how low her stats are, take a look at Cyclops. This is a uniform from 2019, 53,400 energy attack. Again, same sort of build, no Odin's blessings, stage 10 versus stage 12 Power of Angry Hulk. Okay, CTP of Insight does give him some defensive stats, but it doesn't give him any attack stats. And then the Mythic Uniform. But again, this is a 2019 uniform, not a 2022 uniform, and certainly not a 2022 paid uniform. And this one has even, you know, it has 70,000 HP and it has even more defenses, right? I know he has a passive, guys. I know he gives all allies 30% energy attack, but... So does she. Morgan gives all allies, all universal allies, 35%. So yeah, and I'm not using Cyclops' leadership or I'm not using him here on the team to inflate his stats. Like I'm, you know, if I did this and then I looked at Cyclops, he'd be way higher. Oh, 60,000 energy attack, right? 20,000 defense. We're not doing that, okay? So I am a little bit disappointed with her, um, her stats and I am a little bit confused about her rotation, but we're gonna get into that now. We have an ignore dodge 160 proc obelisk. I do think she's proc friendly, 
but let's get into it. Just a quick reminder, Morgan Le Fay's uniform is found in the event shop down below on the right side of the main page, and it will be there right uh, next to all of the other purchases for 30 of the tokens, the Halloween tokens. Now you will get 10 Halloween tokens from the special check-in event. It's actually not seen here yet, but it's gonna start in a couple of days. And on the seventh day, you're gonna get 10 tokens. And then the way you would get the other 20 tokens is just purchasing things in the shop. You can purchase whatever you want. The fastest way to do it is to just purchase the offer for agents number two. It gives you 30 tokens and you can just boom, get her uniform right away. If you would like something that's a little bit more cost effective, then wait a week to get the 10 tokens and then pick up Black Bolt's Halloween chest number two, and you have to buy that two times. So it's a little bit cheaper overall, but again, you have to wait a month, or sorry, you have to wait a week for that. Um, and you get these, you know, you get 12 of these chests that could have some really nice things in them. You could get really lucky and get a mega tier two, but yeah, any other, any almost any other pack you purchase is gonna give you way more tokens. Like this one gives you 100, you know, this one gives you 50. So anything else you're going to purchase is, or 40 is going to give you more than the 30 or the 20 that you need. Of course, beyond the uniform, you can use the tokens on those, either the, uh, the dispatch stuff or the Halloween chests. Uh, but we'll get into that in a separate video. So as you can see, we're using Proxima Lead because Morgan Le Fay has no ignore dodge on her kit. So keep that in mind if you wanna use her in content like Dispatch, no ignore dodge means that she's going to miss a lot of attacks against higher leveled enemies or against Null, Corvus, these other world boss legends that have a lot of guaranteed dodge, maybe even Ultron. So keep that in mind. That's why I gave her an obelisk with ignore dodge. Very, very important. So she's at about 75% ignore dodge. Now here's the thing. I think this is the best rotation for Morgan Le Fay. And I know if you've paid attention to her skills, you're probably wondering, Alex, why aren't you delay canceling um, the, uh, why aren't you delay canceling the third skill to pass the proc on to her other skills? Well, the reason is it just doesn't seem to work very well. That's honestly the simplest answer I can give you. Uh, I have a lot better success just using the third skill after the fact and doing this regular combo now i just missed a proc which is unfortunate but basically her third skill does really good damage on its own and then when you try to combo it and you try to pass the proc it doesn't at least so far in my testing now my testing could end up being wrong or my testing may end up you know needing some adjustments but for the time being this is what I found to be the best. So if you want to make the most out of your Morgan Le Fay and you don't have a CTP of Rage to give her, you're not like ABX uh, inclined, a CTP of Energy can absolutely work and the chain hit damage would be quite nice. But this is the this is the rotation. The tier three is not very sticky, which is nice. You get really good consistent damage. And the nice thing is you're able to deal damage basically the whole time because her her four two her four two five rotation does good damage. And then her uh, her three does really good damage off the proc. It's really weird. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, it's very unusual. It makes less sense than it would if I could pass the proc. But I tried passing the proc onto the tier three. I tried I tried all this stuff and nothing seemed to work. Uh, and then I got to this one and it just it just sort of works. So let's see what happens here. Yeah, three just has really good damage, but it's like by itself. I don't know. And you can pass the proc on the third skill right away. Uh, it's not that it doesn't let you pass the proc and it's sort of like uh, turning off. So it, it's not that. I really, honestly, I can't explain. I cannot explain the deal with Morgan Le Fay. It's spooky. Uh, if anyone can solve this issue, I, I welcome your, your feedback. But uh, for now, f okay, I got guard broken. She does get guard broken a, a bit. So I would say uh, for those of you that are fans of Mighty Destruction, yeah, it's definitely a possibility. But yeah, she has short enough uh, she has short enough animations that you can you can pop off the tier three. I saw some people comparing her tier three to Ancient Ones. I don't really see it. Ancient One has one of the slowest, longest animations on her tier three. That's super frustrating. One thing that I really like about Morgan, despite getting guard broken, is she has the revive. So you know that even if things go south. Literally on cue, okay. You know that if things go south, you can just revive. Wow, I'm taking a lot of damage. 
Okay, that's something you definitely don't want to do. I'm still sort of learning the character, so I'm going to make mistakes. You definitely don't want to start the rotation far away from the, the enemy because you're the, not going to be able to cancel out of the um, out of the skill, out of the fourth skill. But yeah, like she does, she pops off with really nice burst damage. No iframe ignore, unfortunately, but yeah. So she can do 39 with a 160 proc. I think that that is pretty good. It may not be good enough for some of you who are expecting more from a paywall uniform, and I can totally understand that. But um, I definitely think that this is on the more competitive side of things. Now, obviously, you're not going to get the same value as we got out of Storm because she is uh, tier fourable. But you're also, you know, you're also getting a support, right? So we got to remember that. Solid damage, solid, solid damage. And she has the support value and she's her own debuff lead. Now, I think she's going to get obliterated right here. I think she's going to yeah, get guard broken right away. And then, yeah, she just takes way too much damage. So that's actually a mistake. You don't want to stand anywhere near null. She, her, her defenses and her HP being that low is why she takes so much damage, right? And you can see her HP is not much higher than Mystique's. And Mystique doesn't have a uniform. So that's that's crazy to me. And that really goes to show you that stats stats do matter, right? And, and it's not just attack stats that matter. But yeah, she's able to pull this out despite all... Oh no, we're not able to pull it out. <laughs> all right, it's fine. It's totally fine. Listen, I'm, I, I'm approaching this review in a completely honest way because I'm not trying to FOMO you into buying the uniform and I'm also not trying to convince you not to buy the uniform. I think it's a good uniform and I think there's reasons to skip it. Like I said, it's a paid uniform, so that's a, that is a reason to skip it. And she's not game breaking, right? At best, I think best case scenario, she's going to create a new meta for PvP. So I think if you're really into PvP, especially Alliance Conquest, because you can sort of double dip with Alliance Conquest and Timeline Battle, you're going to need to take a very hard look at this uniform. And you're probably going to want to pick it up. 35% attack for universals and the debuff. Very nice. And she's got the revive. However, as a standalone PvP character, I just don't see it. No iframe ignore, no reflect, none of this stuff. Right? She has damage reduction. That's about it. So I don't see her going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Gore. Hulk tier 4, Carnage tier 4, Thanos, Emma Frost, uh, Adam Warlock. I just don't see it, right? And then on the other hand, for PvE, she does seem good. Better than Null. Maybe better than Gore. Are there better options, though? In the villain category, sure, we have Superior Iron Man, Carnage, Hulk. We have options. And now Black Bolt. And then on the Universal side, we have other options. And on the female side... Female side's probably the weakest if you consider female villains, but that's where we're going to have to do a bit more investigating and see how she performs with a rage. However, with a rage, you got to consider that she doesn't have any guaranteed crit rate. So it's a bit of a mystery. It, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a spooky one, but yeah. That's my initial impressions of it, and so I can't really say yay or nay. I can't give you guys a, you know, a definitive answer just yet. Like, you have to buy this uniform or you have to skip this uniform. So we're still sort of working out the kinks in that. Anyways, hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Smash the like button, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.